Shall we turn in our Bibles to Psalm, the book of Psalms and Psalms 103. <clears throat> and we read verses 1 to 5. The 103rd Psalm, verses 1 to 5. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Shall we bow for a moment and pray that God will speak with us. Father in heaven, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the privilege that you've given to us to meditate your word. And we pray that you will minister to us in a very special way. Lord, we pray that you will enlighten us, Lord, uh, on the, Lord, into the depths of the mysteries of your word. That we will, Lord, uh, receive new insight, new revelation, new understanding. And Lord, we pray that our lives will be greatly blessed. We pray that we will, Lord, begin to live a life of thanksgiving and praises and worship unto you. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> a very familiar scripture portion for all of us, Psalm 103. We always read it and uh, uh, we say it, uh, we recite it by heart at the close of a prayer time. When we finish praying, we say it by heart and we finish with a thanksgiving psalm. It's good uh, and it's a good practice. But sometimes we also do it um, uh, as a routine because we just know it by heart. Uh, we quickly, you know, in, from memory, from subconscious memory, we just recite it in a few seconds and we rush out. But if you go into this psalm and begin to read, you would understand that it is so meaningful and it is important that we do it with much meaning and understanding. Read it again. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The first two scripture verses unlock the whole passage, the whole uh, chapter. Praise the Lord, O my soul. The psalmist King David praises God and he says he's, he knows the difference or he has understood the difference between praising God just as a lip service and uh, the difference between praising God from, a, from our inmost being. He says, praise the Lord, O my soul and uh, all my inmost being praise his name, praise his holy name. And praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. To title this morning's message, it would be forget not his benefits. Forget not his benefits. It's so appropriate for us as we've come to the fag end of this year. In a month's time, we're going to be through with this year and we will go into another new year. It's so important that we spend the last month of the year as a month of thanksgiving and praises. It would be most appropriate to do that why because God has been with us through the whole year 11 months have gone by if you would just take a moment to look back and think of what has God has done in your life you would surely be filled with a heart of gratefulness and thankfulness God has done many many wonderful things in our lives if we are still breathing it is the grace of God it's not because we've been good, but it's because God has been good to us that he has added days in our lives. If we are in good health, if it, was, if it has been made possible by God for us to come together this morning and to worship God and to be in his presence and to be enjoying the presence of God and enjoying this wonderful music and listening to songs of the birth of Jesus and to be rejoicing that Jesus is born for us. If we are here just happy and joyful, in one peace, in good health, we've got to be praising and thanking God. And that's exactly what the psalmist King David has been praising God for. You read verse 3 and 4, who forgives all our sins and heals all your diseases. 
who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. God has blessed us so abundantly. He has given us the desires of our heart. He has given us good health and strength. These are things that we just take them so much for granted. We don't realize them. We don't recognize them. We don't think of them so much. Of course, we just generally thank God. We say, Lord, I thank you, praise you for everything. But that's very general. But if you just look back and begin to recollect one by one, and that's what he says, forget not all his benefits. We should never forget God's benefits. Whatever he has given us, whatever he has done for us should never be forgotten. And we as human beings, we live so often with very poor memory. Some of us don't even remember what we had for last night for dinner. So long is our lasting memories. But it's so important that we forget not his benefits. Remember, if you just sit down, it takes time. You just have to be thinking about it and go back, rewind and go back into January. What happened in January? What happened in March? What happened in May? What happened in June and July? And sit down and think for a while and slowly you begin to remember. You begin to remember, oh, I was on the road and, and, and I almost met with that accident. But by God's grace, we just, you know, missed by an inch. Oh, if something had happened, if I had fallen, if I had had a fall, what would have happened to me? We would have been sitting probably with a sling in our hands or with a broken hip. Something would have gone wrong. But if you just look at how God has protected us, how God has been with us so many times, you know, when we've had, you know, we've gone on long journey, you travel, you've been on, uh, you know, by bus, by train, you've flown. And so many times God has been with us. You know, I just remember the last time, just recently, a few weeks back, I was coming back from Trivandrum and, uh, uh, and the train suddenly stopped uh, halfway through. And, uh, and then after four hours, we received news that there was a, um, you know, after the rains and all that, there was a bridge and under the bridge, the sand and the, uh, you know, everything under the, under the track had just fallen off. And, uh, and there was only one track. The multiple tracks but now there was only one track and they had repaired it and somehow given some support and so there were trains you know just passing on one track and so all the trains were delayed and just imagine if one of the trains that had gone there had just toppled derailed fallen off what would have happened and it was late in the night a night train and if thankfully somebody had found that out in the at midday in the afternoon and brought to the attention of the authorities and they were restoring the track if it had happened if it had slipped off in the night and we had been on the train you don't know what would have happened you know how graciously God protects us praise God we, we complain about that inconvenience where we have to be delayed for five hours but God had protected us that day hallelujah amen praise God you know like Likewise, if you just look back into your life, you could go back into many times where God had protected you, God had provided for you just at that very moment where you had a huge payment to be made and you didn't have the money for it and miraculously God supplied your need, you know, much beyond what you ever dreamt or thought of and you were blessed. There are many, many things that God has done for us and you look at what David is thankful for. It's good to look at these men of God and what they were thankful to God for. Praises come from our inmost being and they need to come from our inmost being. If we are just praising and thanking God just out of our mouths, just because we have to, just because it's become a routine for us and, and it's so often has become a routine for us as Christians. We are so much used to it. We are so much used to saying praise the Lord and hallelujah and thank you Jesus. It, it just naturally comes. You know, when the driver who's driving the bus breaks a little hard, we say, thank you, Jesus. You know, it just flows out. But we don't know what, why we are saying thank you and, and, and we don't mean it so often. But the psalmist King David says, you know, out of my inmost being, I praise you. 
My inmost being praises you. Praises need to be born out of an inmost being. It comes out of a conscious uh, sense of thankfulness, gratefulness. To, to recognize what God has done. And then we, thankful, we are thankful to God for that. We need to have a heart of thankfulness. Today we live in a society, we live in a world which is devoid of thankfulness, gratefulness. People never get back to come back and say, thank you, you helped me. Thank you. you, you spoke for me at that right moment. Thank you, you were there for me, you came to help me at that right moment. People don't look back and say, thank you. We live in such a thankless society and we should never be following the trends and the, and the patterns of this world. Bible, the biblical values and the biblical standards are the standards we need to live by. Those are the values we need to live by. Psalmist King David was always thankful to God. Yes, he was elevated. He was promoted. He was blessed. He was the greatest man who ever lived in his time with so much wealth and abundance and, and people came and joined him pledged their allegiance to him. He had great support, but he never allowed pride to come in his life. He was always thankful to God for everything. Hallelujah. And the longest book in the Bible was written by King David, who was thankful to God. It's a psalm, songs of praise. That tells us how much thankful he was. If you read psalm after psalm, he describes many, many things. Many things that God had done in his life. How I love your law, I praise you. For you, you teach me your law, I praise you. You know, for everything, he recognizes everything that he has learned, everything that he has understood, everything that has happened in his life, everything that he is able to do was all because of God's grace and he recognized that. He was thankful to God for that. Hallelujah. We need to recognize and, and we need to have a thankful heart this morning. We need to bring back to remembrance and recognize that God has done everything for us. And Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. And so we are virtually, it's impossible for us to do anything. And if at all, we are able to do anything, achieve anything, accomplish anything in this life, it's only because of the grace of God. It's only because of the grace of God. We might think we are talented. We might think we are gifted. We might think we have great potentials. We might think we have inherited it from our previous generations. Oh, thank God. It could be true, genetically true, scientifically true. But where did it all origin from? It is all from God. Hallelujah. God is the author and the source of everything. Everything. We need to recognize that and remember and thank God for that. If you read in verse 3, look at what he thanks God for. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Look at the first part of verse 3. He's thankful. Forget not all his benefits. For what? What are the benefits he's pointing out at? Verse 3, who forgives all your sins. And a connection I see from that to verse 4 also. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. God has forgiven our sins. The first thing we need to be thankful to God for is the gift of salvation that God has given to us. There's nothing more greater that we could be thankful to Him for. The greatest miracle, the greatest blessing, the greatest thing that we have ever received in our life is the gift of salvation. We've received Jesus. He Himself. It's so appropriate in this month as we celebrate Christmas and the birth of Christ so important that we are thankful to God for giving us his son Jesus we need to be thankful to God for the gift of Jesus who is with us Emmanuel means God with us he was called Emmanuel and he is with us all the time and Jesus when he ascended back into heaven he said I will go and send you another comforter the Holy Spirit who will always be with you and the Spirit of God is here with us all the time we got to be thankful to God for the greatest gift the gift of salvation for his presence is here with us his presence has been given to us there are many many people in this world who live without the presence of God without the assurance of salvation without the assurance of the forgiveness of sins and so their sins torment them day and night they are peaceless they struggle to sleep people take pills to sleep because their sins are not forgiven they don't have salvation. There is no peace. And so it's a struggle. They are not peaceful. They are not truly joyful. They are not truly happy. They have not been set free from sin. Their sins have not been forgiven yet. 
they've not come to Christ but we have had the privilege of coming to Jesus the greatest gift of salvation how many of us realize that this morning do you realize that that I am saved I'm born again. My sins are forgiven. I'm going to be with Jesus in heaven. I have the hope of eternal life. That's the greatest privilege a Christian has. Much more than the celebration of Christmas and everything, the color papers and everything, all that will fade away. And one day we will pull it out and throw it into the dustbin. But what remains is Christ. Hallelujah. The person who remains is Jesus. He, we will never lose him. Hallelujah. He remains with us. The greatest gift of salvation. He, forgive, he has forgiven my sins. King David had his sins forgiven by God. When he sinned against God, when he fell in sin, he repented of his sins. And because he has forgi- he's been forgiven, he realizes the value of forgiveness. He realizes how it's so important that I am forgiven and restored into the relationship with God once again. And so because of that, he has been blessed with children. God blessed him with Solomon. And God removed that curse of sin from his life and from his family. And God blessed him and made him king. And God continued to bless the generations of King David. And after several generations of uh, kings, D- King David's line, you find that many times the prophets speak and they say, because God speaks and says, because of my servant David, there will be a lamp burning in Israel. There will continue to be a person, a remnant, who will be a king in Israel because of my servant David, God says. Because David came back to God and God calls David and he says, he's a man who is after my own heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to recognize that because we are saved and we, because we have received Jesus and because of the forgiveness that we have received, we have received every other blessing as well. Hallelujah. Our generations to come will also be blessed because we have Jesus with us. Because he chooses to bless the generations of the righteous. So we got to be thankful. Got to be thankful for this greatest gift of salvation. We got to be thankful for the forgiveness of sins when we talk about salvation there are two aspects to it firstly we are we are thankful to god because we've been forgiven of our past sins and secondly what forgiveness does and salvation does is it delivers us from the curse of sin and from the root of sin itself the root of sin has been uprooted from our lives it is the root of sin that causes acts of sins Adam and Eve fell into sin and when they fell into sin it was not just an act of sin it was sin the nature of sin entering mankind itself and when we are born again when our sins are forgiven when we are saved what happens is the nature of sin is destroyed and we are imputed implanted with God's righteousness hallelujah do you recognize the difference we are not just forgiven of our acts of sins but the root of sin the nature of sin is also destroyed when we come to Christ that's the power of Jesus that's why a person who who confesses his sins maybe he had a bad bad habit and he forgive and he's forgiven and he and he asked God to forgive him of his sins he's not just forgiven of the act of sin but you would find that he never goes back to it again A chain smoker who's been smoking for years together, decades together, stops smoking when he comes to Christ. How is he able to give it up? A drunkard who's been drinking all through his life and he can never go to bed without drinking, stops drinking. And he doesn't have withdrawal symptoms. He doesn't have withdrawal symptoms. People who counsel sometimes... uh, no offense to anybody, but there are some professions who, who counsel people of such kind and they would say, no, 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 don't stop it suddenly. Reduce it slowly, little bit, little bit, reduce it. And the man, when he gets its smell, he can't stop it. He needs it because 
that chemical uh, substance needs need to be uh, uh, he needs to have it the body craves for it and, uh, and until he has that level of intoxication he wouldn't be satisfied you could never set free a person like that that would be very temporal but when a person comes to Christ at that very moment his past sinful life is forgiven and the root of sin the nature of sin is uprooted completely hallelujah totally he's totally set free he's, he becomes a new man in Christ the word of God says if any man is in Christ he's a new creation all the old thing is gone and the new has come he becomes a new man a new woman in Christ hallelujah we put on Christ the righteousness of God comes in us you no longer serve sin the bondage and the curse of sin is totally destroyed destroyed at its root hallelujah only when you have the root alive the fruit will come forth when you destroy the root you will not have the fruit hallelujah and so that's why it's important to recognize shouldn't we look back and thank God and say Lord you've forgiven me of my past sins you also uprooted the nature of sin away from me I'm no longer called a sinner I'm called a saint hallelujah look at your neighbor and call them saint of God you are a saint of God come on when you confess that greet them shake hands and say you are a saint of God hallelujah amen no longer a sinner hallelujah that condemnation has been removed hallelujah look at that verse in Psalm 103 verse 9 he will not always accuse nor will he harbor his anger forever he does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities the condemnation of sin has been removed hallelujah totally gone and so we have we, we need to be thankful for the God to God for that verse 11 for as I high as the heavens are above the earth so great is his love for those who fear him as far as the east is from the west so far has he removed our transgressions from us hallelujah totally removed from us as far as east is from the west it has been removed sinful nature has been removed there's no smell of sin on you anymore hallelujah never again never again you got to be thankful to God for that hallelujah Jesus looked at that adulterous woman and said neither do I condemn you go and sin no more go and sin no more she was forgiven everybody came accusing her they brought the law against her but Jesus forgave her and said neither do I condemn you our God is a God who forgives and never condemns us turn with me to Mark's gospel and chapter 2 <clears throat> look at what Jesus does to this paralytic man Mark's gospel and chapter 2 quickly and we read verse 5 Jesus saw this paralytic paralyzed man and say son your sins are forgiven there are two aspects to that exactly whatever I've been speaking to you is right here in this verse which Jesus says son your sins are forgiven firstly his sins have been forgiven that's what we focus on normally we focus on that but before that see what Jesus calls him he calls him son he doesn't call him hey paralytic man your sins are forgiven he says son we are called sons we've come into a sonship we've come into a relationship with God that that status of us has been changed now we are no longer strangers we are no longer outsiders we no longer are bounded to sin we no longer no longer belong to the kingdom of the devil we belong to the kingdom of God we are called as sons hallelujah we've come into that relationship with God and so we need to be thankful to God because he called me son and he's forgiven my sins as well hallelujah he's uprooted the nature of sin he has taken away that status where I used to be a sinner I used to go there I don't go there anymore I used to be around such kind of people I don't hang around them with that, with them anymore your status has changed your your personality has changed your nature has changed your lifestyle has changed your priorities have changed your values have changed the life that you live your lifestyle has changed he called me son 
And so that has brought the change. Hallelujah. We thank God for the salvation that he has given to us. Forget not all his benefits. This month of December, may this month be a month of thanksgiving and praises unto God. Would you take time in this month, as we are in the last month of the year, would you take time to spend together as a family or alone and sit down and look back and think of all that God has done? Beginning from the work of salvation that Jesus did on the cross and the salvation that we've received, beginning from there, thanking God for everything. Would you spend this month and call this month a month of thanksgiving? Amen. Declare it as a month of thanksgiving. Declare it as a month of praises and worship. And as we thank and worship and praise God, we will also be preparing ourselves for the new year. Hallelujah. Go back to look at, um, uh, let's, let's, let's look at Galatians, another scripture verse uh, in connection with that. I missed to connect you to that earlier. Galatians chapter number 3. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26 and 27. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. That is what baptism does. Baptism is a burial of our old sinful life. And when we come up out of the water, we live, to, uh, we live in the image of Christ. We live to serve God. We live in a new life. That's what we read in Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 as well. That is what baptism does. That's why we don't sprinkle water on babies. Because uh, you don't find that in the Bible firstly. And secondly, the word baptism means to immerse. The word baptizo, the root word uh, in Greek, means to immerse or to dip. If you baptize a child, the child will die. Hello. Yeah, that's what will happen. And you don't find any evidence anywhere in scripture. Go home and read from Genesis to Revelation where babies were brought to Jesus or to the disciples or to the prophets or anybody or to the temple and water was sprinkled on them. It's not, not there in the Bible. But what baptism is, is to let go of our sinful past life, to lay it down, to ask Jesus to forgive us. And you read about that in Romans chapter 6. And what happens is our old sinful past life is buried under water. And when we come out, we lived to live a new life in Christ. And just as Jesus died for our sins and he rose again from the dead, symbolic of that, of work of salvation that Jesus did, we are also buried in the waters of baptism and we resurrect and we are taken out, out of the water to live a new life in Christ, to live a righteous life. That's why Jesus himself went to John the Baptist when he needn't have had to be baptized. He was God. He was 100% God, 100% human. He was sinless, but yet to show us a way a model and he said it is good for us to do this and and he did it in Matthew chapters 3 and 16 you read that he was baptized he was baptized in the river Jordan little drips of water you know uh, uh, sprinkling of water was not done on his on 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 Jesus he was baptized the symbol of 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 committing our life to Christ of of dying to sin and living for Christ that's why we are baptized. That's what, that's what brings us into the kingdom of God. That's why we are called as the sons of God. Verse 26, Galatians 3, 26, 27. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. When we are baptized, we put on Christ. The nature of sin is gone. It brings a spiritual transformation. It is not a name-giving ceremony for a baby. Amen. We are thankful to God for salvation. Thankful to God for salvation. We need to be grateful. We need to recognize where we've come from. We need to see how, what kind of a mess we were in once. If we, need to, we need to think if in case I had not come to Christ, what would have been the state of my life now? What would have been the state of my family now? But because Christ entered our hearts. Look at the blessings we have. Look at the hope we have. Look at the joy we have. Look at the confidence we have. Hallelujah. Praise God. And verse number 3, the latter part. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. We got to thank God because he has healed our diseases. 
Praise God. I'm sure we will all be thankful to God for that. So often, there are people who fall ill with a simple, small problem and that leads into some difficulty and some of them even lose their whole life. But this morning, I mean, aren't we grateful that God has healed us every time? <clears throat> not just once, but every time. It was not just the medicine that did, did, did the job. Medicine street, doctor street, Jesus heals. Hallelujah. We need doctors. We need medical science. We need medicines. We need to go to the doctor. But ultimately, healing comes from the wounds of Jesus. Hallelujah. Read with me in Isaiah chapter 53, quickly. Isaiah chapter 53. This is where our healing comes from. And this is where we need to go to for healing. Isaiah 53. Verse 5, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we were healed. Hallelujah. The healing comes from the wounds of Jesus. Because he took the pain. Because he took the suffering upon his body. And because he died on the cross for our sins. And he's removed the curse of sin and sickness and the devil. We have healing from the wounds of Jesus. We've got to be thankful to God for that. And we need to go to the wounds of Jesus. We need to go to Jesus and claim the healing power that flows from his resurrected body and receive it into our lives. You will see miracles happen in your life. Hallelujah. We've got to do that. Turn with me also in James. The book of James. This is what we should do. Chapter 5. <clears throat> Verse 13 and 14. If Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. What we should do? Take oil, coconut oil, olive oil, any oil. Take oil in your hands, place it on the person who's sick. Anoint them with oil symbolizes, you know, the anointing and the power of God to heal and pray and believe for a healing miracle. Try it and see. They will be healed. Hallelujah. Before you rush to the doctor, lay hands and heal. And pray a prayer of healing and heal them. God has given us the power to heal. Do you know that? Not just to pray for healing, but the power, you might, you know, I might be scaring you here or stepping on your theology a little bit. God has given us the power to heal. Read with me in Mark's gospel, chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Verse 17 and 18, Mark 16, 17, 18. And these signs will accompany those who believe. How many of us believe here? Believe in Jesus? Believe in the healing power of God? These signs will accompany if you believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And they, when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will... Hallelujah. Who will do it? Who will do it? We will be, do it. We as believers will do it. Lay our hands on sick and in Jesus' name, pronounce the healing. Not just pray. We got to pray. But at the same time, pronounce, declare the healing. Lord, your word says in Mark 16, 17, 18, for those who believe, these are the signs that will follow. And I believe in your name and I lay my hands upon this sick person and I pronounce your healing upon them in your name. Let them be healed. Believe and do it. 
they will be healed hallelujah last night we heard a wonderful message doing the works of the father this is jesus doing the works of the father and jesus says you will do what i do and if you believe you will even do greater things than these not that we become greater than god but he says you will do greater things than these than even what jesus has done and so he has given us the power to do that he has given us the authority to use his name we got to be thankful to god for the healing power that come has come upon us every time we fell ill and god has helped us to recover <clears throat> hallelujah how many of us pray for cholesterol to be healed huh you know we don't pray for such things we just assume praise god many some of you pray we assume normally cholesterol comes after age of 40 and so oh what has come to everybody has come to me also you have to just live with it and one day the cholesterol will go so high that you can almost get it out and fry it so much of fat accumulated that it will block my heart some day and then i will just die and we just assume that's what will happen come on don't look look like that as if you never thought like that how many of you pray for blood pressure to come down you could pray for that we assume oh bp has come that's all all that i need to do is be on tablets the rest of my life don't we assume that oh diabetes you can't help it oh it has come all you have to do is take tablets before you have a meal and it will control your sugar level and you just have to be on diet and some more struggle and not eat sweets at all and finally what to do we almost live with this understanding that these things cannot be healed that these are perennial these will be persistent that these are chronic diseases which cannot be changed but god is able to heal chronic diseases hallelujah irreversible unchangeable diseases can be healed by god hallelujah we got to believe in god for that god will bring down blood pressure level I think it was a few months back for our senior pastor suddenly had a stroke and many people thought that would be very difficult and for 2 weeks he didn't even open his eyes and the church prayed and we all prayed as well every service every meeting fasting prayer we always prayed we all prayed and many many believers across the city and around the world prayed for him pastor sam sundram and god brought him back to life hallelujah god gave him a new life the 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 you know the uh pressure and everything came back came down came under control yes the doctor treated he was admitted in the apollo hospital for many many months and slowly he has recovered and now he started coming to the church and he started preaching also hallelujah amen you know with so much complication with so many things he had already had a heart surgery and so many things and at an elderly age people will say oh it's very difficult but whatever be the age whatever be the complication god is able to heal hallelujah we got to believe on that experience that and be thankful to god for that hallelujah we got to walk in divine healing we got to walk in divine healing thank god turn with me to mark's gospel quickly and chapter 12 chapter 2 uh mark chapter 2 and verse number 12 the same passage we read and jesus looked at that paralyzed man after his sins were forgiven he got up took his mat and walked out in full view of them all this amazed everyone and they praised god saying we have never seen anything like this hallelujah if we truly believe in jesus we got to experience miracles like this if we truly believe in jesus if our faith on our lord jesus christ is real and true we got to experience miracles of people paralyzed walking again hallelujah amen walking again he got up took his mat and he went back home as a normal man we got to experience that we got to see teeth growing up again Amen. Those are some extraordinary miracles you got to believe God for. Once you remove the tooth, that's it. It's gone. It's gone with the dentist. 
But, but would you believe God and say, Lord, give me new teeth, Lord? Can you believe for some uh, crazy miracles? If you could call it like that. Lord, I'm losing hair. I'm not going for a transplant. I'm going to pray for new roots to spring forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lay your hands and pray it out. When you look at your mirror and you don't have anything much to comb. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes you just assume these are gone. That's it. It's gone forever. Hallelujah. Eyesight. Lord, I pray. I've been wearing glasses for 20 years, but I'm praying, Lord, that I will just remove this off completely forever, that I'll be healed. Pray. Believe God.